What is up, everybody? Sven Diesel here with Sportsman's Warehouse. We're going to be tying up the STP Frog. It's a uh, Tony Tomsu pattern, and it's super effective for bass. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. This is a TMC 8089. It's the perfect hook for this. I believe it's the hook that uh, Tony recommends as well. I tie them in four, sixes, and eights. And we're going to be using some uh, UTC 210 uh, uh, thread here. And I'm using chartreuse. I also use uh, orange as well. We need a heavier thread when we're tying this foam so that we don't uh, cut it because it is a two millimeter foam. And we're going to be using yellow and olive for this. And you can also use white for the belly. Um, I haven't really played around much with other colors for the top end. Olive seems to be my go to. And we're going to be using some silly legs. These are tab legs in orange. It's got, or in, sorry, in olive, and it's got some nice uh, speckle to it. So let's go ahead and get a, a hook loaded. And uh, on the version that uh, I fish, I usually don't fish it with a weed guard, but a lot of guys uh, it could be effective for when you're fishing it in the lily pads and everything else. So what we'll do is we'll get our thread started and lay down a nice little base here, and then I'll show you how to do a weed guard on these. And uh, the reason we lay down a nice little thread base here is to get some nice grip um, because we're going to be tying and binding down some foam and it really helps to have that thread base to, for something to adhere to. Now for the weed guard, there's a couple ways you could do this. This is the way that I like to do it. And this is just 20 pound mono. Uh, it's what I have laying around here right now. Uh, you might want to go a little heavier with some 30 or 50. And what we'll do here is I'm just going to cut off about an 8 inch section. I'll fold it in half. And then I'll just simply trim that end out and we'll tie it in here on the top of the shank. And notice how I'm leaving a nice little gap there between where we're binding in materials and the hook guy because I want to leave that for where we're going to tie off the weed guard later. Um, so we're minimizing um, bulk on the shank right there. And now as I work my way down the bend, I want this uh, mono uh, to be splitting so that it's starting to go on each side of the shank of the hook so that it's not sitting on the top anymore. And that way this will kind of bend around each side of the hook point and uh, come in at kind of an angle, I guess you'd say, help uh, to prevent any um, weeds from fouling on this hook, uh, give it a little bit of a smoother transition when you're stripping it in. Um, uh, but uh, like I said, I, I don't usually put these on, but uh, for those that want to, there's the beginning. You got tied in right now. And so what we need to do is get those out of the way because that will be our last material we tie in. So it needs to be out of the way for the rest of your fly. So use a hair clip or whatever works for you. Now, um, they actually make a, a foam cutter for this, but I'm just going to eyeball it and wing it because I know not everybody has that uh, foam um, guard, but I'm going to measure my foam so that it's roughly two lengths, the overall fly length, and then I'll kind of eyeball it so that the hook gap is the width of our foam. And like I said, I'm just eyeballing this. Um, you can purchase the actual foam cutters, but uh, here we go. I'm just going to take both of these, um, stack them on each other, and these are in no way going to be perfect, but we're going to form a little bit of a head here. And so I'm just going to start on the one end, and it will all make sense when we're done. And we'll kind of work our way around and there we go we've got the the beginning of our head and now we're going to indent in for the neck and then come back out for the body so you can see i'm totally just free handing this um eyeballing it i've i guess maybe i've done too many of these that um, it makes sense to me but uh, then we'll come back here into the rear of the body and then we will finish off by creating a nice little uh, long tab there which helps with tying it in and so now we're just going to mirror that to the other side and we'll roughly just create it I guess kind of maybe a tadpole shape um, I'm not too sure what I would call it but it's a frog shape that's what we're tying so uh, that makes a little bit more sense and so we just mirrored that and like I said it's roughly the width of the hook gap and there we go there's a rough outline you can trim it up you can spend as much time as you want on this but i think we have a really good profile here um, for our beginning and then uh yeah it might take you a few tries to tie to cut that out but you can see that uh, the body is roughly a little bit longer than the shank and then we've got this tab coming off which is going to help us tie in it's kind of a um, I think it's called the clamshell. So what we'll do is we'll take our underbody and tie that in and see I'm still leaving that gap there at the front for our spacing. And then I'll tie that in so that that uh, rear section of the body of the frog 
is right there ready to fold over. So we're going to leave that right there for now and do some securing wraps to bind that down. And you can see what we'll do is we'll pull that up and over and tie it in again. And it's kind of creating a, they call it the clamshell. And that's how we're able to do the two-tone body. But we'll lay down a little bit of super glue to kind of have that set fast um, and bind the mono, bind that foam, and then we'll set this other piece right there on top, lining it up with the rear butt. And if it's a little long, go ahead and cut it. And we'll just go ahead and do some loose wraps, trying to keep it on top. Remember that super glue is wet, so don't touch it because then it will get everywhere. And then I'll do some nice securing wraps there. And you don't need to secure this too much because that uh, the, the less you wrap those tight, the more it will float. And so the next step is we're going to tie in our tab legs for our rear legs. And I'm just going to take one tab and rip off about four or five of these. And it helps if you keep the, the tab attached. Um, it just helps for tying these knots. So then I'll just take uh, the tab and I'll just wrap it around my finger and pull it through. Now with these, uh, the, the rear legs, you want to have about a half an inch exposed from the knot. And so just kind of clean that up. Don't pull too tight because they will break. And then we'll just go ahead and trim that tab off. And there we go. We've got our, our little toes and our, our, our foot. And then I'll do the same with the other side. And as you, the other side can be a little tricky because as you uh, tighten it, you want to make sure that the, fire, the, the legs between the two knots aren't super like squirrely. And we'll just kind of trim that, tie it, and then we'll cut off the, the tab again and we've got our rear legs there. Now a little trick for tying this in, just fold these uh, in half right around your thread and notice how I've got it advanced up a little bit. It's not sitting right back at my bend. It's uh, got about a, um, an 8 to 3 16 of an inch. I'll go ahead and bind that fast with just that one wrap, and then I'll pull them down to each side. We want them to go in between those two foam pieces at a down angle, and then I'll just loosely wrap up and over um, right there and then do some nice securing wraps now. The reason I do loosely wrapped is because even with your thread being as heavy as we are, if you crank down, you could potentially cut those legs and cause a a weak spot and so I just kind of leave it um, loose at the rear but then it's bound down further up in. Now we're going to lay down a thread base on that section I told you not to do um, and we're going to tie in this head so I just fold it over pinch it down on top do two to three loose wraps and then kind of crank you don't have to crank all the way uh, you don't want to pinch it around there but you can see right there we got it just a uh, perfect so our head is extended beyond and now we'll make our arms so the difference between the arms and the legs are I don't use the whole tab leg I want the arms to be a little bit shorter that way they're not you know dangling into the the legs and such and typically if you've looked at a frog the legs are longer than the the arms and so we'll do about uh, half maybe two-thirds it's a kind of an eyeball method here that I'm using. There's no exact uh, recipe on length for this. And I, I leave the fingers a little bit shorter. Same process, just fold it in half, place it on top of the, uh, the bend there, and we will uh, kind of pull them and orient them so that they're going to each side. And you do that using figure eight patterns. So you can see once I get a few wraps, I'll just figure eight around these, and then they're just gonna stay put going on each side. And this is a little bit tricky to do, but once you've uh, done a few, you can see how they're just extended right out to each side. The arms are slightly shorter. And now here comes the easiest part. We're just going to lay down a, a generous amount of glue right there, um, bonding that foam to our previous uh, uh, wraps of the foam um, on the core. And I'm laying it down on each side because what we'll do is we'll fold this over, bind it down with a few wraps, and then squeeze it shut with the super glue binding everything. So I'll position it so those are even. I'll do two to three loose wraps and then kind of crank on the fourth, pull it tight and check to make sure everything looks good. The legs are going out at the right angles and then we will take and I will squeeze the glue to the foam to the core and I'll hold it for five to ten seconds. Um, I don't use a gel for this. I use regular super glue because I don't want to um, have to wait you know the 20 seconds for this to bind um, however the gel I found might be a little bit more durable but 
to be honest, uh, when the bass are hitting these, uh, this fly, I think I, I think my caught roughly 23 on one before before it was pretty much demolished, and so it's a lot of fun. And now here comes the fun part. Uh, what makes this a super effective fly? And I'm just going to kind of clean up the head here. Um, this fly is so fun to fish because it, it pops water. So this mouth, what we'll do here is we're going to open it up slightly by advancing our thread up and pull those two back. And then we will lay down some nice thread wraps here, which will allow that to uh, kind of, as you strip it, it's going to pop water, um, almost like it's drinking water as you pull it. But first we need to secure this weed guard and I'm just going to take my bodkin right here as close as I can to those thread wraps. Um, just insert my bodkin, put a little bit of a hole. Um, this is creating a weak spot in the mouth but usually most of the hits are more on the rear. My rear legs get more demolished than the front of the fly. And so now we're going to take our weed guard and orient it up and making sure not to you know, get it trapped up in any of our legs and push it up through that hole and then advance and this is why I leave uh, cut them more generous because it gives it it makes it a little bit easier to work with and play around with if you were trying to minimize your amount of material here um, you could do less mono but I think it's like seven bucks for 200 yards so I think we're okay there and now what I want to do is I want to orient them so they're a little bit bigger than my hook cap and that way, um, when you strip this across some weeds, it is going to cause the, uh, the mono to um, not let your hook point foul on it. And then I'll just do two, three wraps behind, check my distance again, making sure they're about the same and a little bit larger than the hook gap. And then I'll just do some nice securing wraps now and then a couple wraps in front. And we have trapped our uh, mono now in the front and created our weed guard and it didn't add too much time, but like I said, if you're fishing it in the lilies, this, this will help. Um, but also going with a heavier um, pound mono also would be much more beneficial. And then I'm just going to lay down a little bit of super glue there to really just bind that mono in. And also our thread wraps, which would also kind of be the, the, our head cement in this uh, instance. And leave the mouth kind of open like that because that's pretty much what's going to make that water pop as you strip it. And it just creates this little cool push push. And often when I'm fishing this in the, uh, the sunset or, or mo early mornings, I can't really see uh, the frog as, I, as I'm stripping it in. But I can see that water pulsate up as you, as you strip it. And so I'll watch strip, strip, and then when I see a little bit of a water react differently, I know something's hitting it, and that's when I set the hook, and it, it's been, it's super fun. So if you've ever fished topwater bass, this is a super, super fun pattern. But now let's make it more um, realistic. Um, we're going to uh, play around. You, you don't need to do these steps. You can fish it just like that, but we're going to just grab a Sharpie here, and I'm going to make it... Uh, more frog-like using some uh, some dots here some speckling and uh, I don't think the bass will ever see this but uh, you know as it's dangling out of its mouth it, it makes it look a little bit more realistic for your for your fish photos and then um, the funny thing is I've had a huge argument about whether or not to add eyes on this and you've got you've got options for eyes you can use um, some of these uh, like those mirage eyes um, that are actually used for you know I use on a lot of my streamers um, but it's fun that um, I was in Hobby Lobby and there's a huge debate on, on whether rattles are effective or not and I found that these little eyes these craft eyes um, they rattle a little bit and so I'm kinda getting the best of both worlds and so I'll just take some of these uh, rattle eyes and I'll lay down a little bit of super glue there and the um, we'll just place them on top using super glue and that uh, literally is um, just for fun um, I think maybe the rattle might be beneficial but I don't really have um, any science or facts to back that up um, for this particular pattern because usually I don't fish it with the eyes and it catches fish and I fish it with the eyes and it catches fish so but we all know that this is a top water pattern so anything on the top is something that the fish are not really seeing and this lands um, I never had one land upside down because of that the weight of the hook point and so there we go it makes a little bit of fun but that's the STP frog it's a Tony uh, Tom Sue pattern 
Um, it's super effective. It's super fun to tie. If you've never tied one, um, go ahead and give it a whirl. Um, pretty much here's your color patterns and sizes, and it works. It catches bass. So hope it works for you, and hope you have fun tying it up. Thanks for watching.